Hi guys. Well, it is another chilly winter evening here in the undisclosed swamp in the middle of nowhere. And uh, I have been, I just finished a 250 mile round trip ride to fail in my attempt to score a campsite for a folk festival that may or may not happen three months from now. And <laughs> here I am on my exciting Friday night. Oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles and it is Friday night. Uh, what is this? December 18th, but I'm going to go ahead and make this my Saturday, December 19th, 2020. Chronicle of the Collapse, because I have a full day tomorrow, and uh, so it's going to be short and sweet. Uh, I found the most intelligent commentary sometimes about the state of the planet right here in the comments section, and I have been enjoying hearing from this fellow named Cougar W. Cougar W., who always starts his comments, biologist, here. So maybe I'll have to interview Cougar. Cougar, if you are, if you would be interested in being interviewed on Collapse Chronicles, uh, drop me an email at collapsechronicles at gmail.com and let's talk about it. Uh, but anyway, to give you an idea of who this guy is, I'm, this is going to be a little bit of a mashup. I'm I, I'm going to skip over, so some of it will be a little bit disjointed. This is kind of a mashup of several comments. Cougar is in a uh, writing mood today, so take it away, Cougar W. This is his response to my Manga Bay rant where I talk a lot about uh, protected areas, you know, the absolute myth of protected areas, and this is a biologist uh, explanation. <clears throat> biologist here, to inform your viewers that there are no protected areas, not anywhere, not any when. Every square foot of land and the equivalent in the water and even the air has been impacted by human activity almost always to destruction. This is why the earth has already lost two-thirds of its living biomass. This is why we are now eyeballs deep in the sixth mass extinction of life on Earth. Any mouth noises you hear about preserving nature or living things is at best delusional, but usually it is just cynical misdirection. Since nobody cares, it continues. The destruction of habitat and living things will now spill over into the destruction of fellow humans also without any concern. This was always in the cards. This was always in our collective DNA. Even the humans that will shortly be evaporated were guilty of destruction and they will reap as they have sown, though not before they desperately strip all the land within their reach of any scrap of biological evidence. All the plants, all the animals, all the systems in their entirety will be eaten or laid to waste all this to extend the meager existence of half of the human species for another round of hopeless births before life and living as they have known these for millennia become impossible, lost for all time. The coming 
combined losses of nature and human lives are simply impossible for most people to imagine, the optimistic mind cannot contain these horrors. Nothing you have ever seen in a fictional account can possibly come close. The human imagination simply does not have the capacity to describe the carnage that is now inevitable. And uh, then we're going to, uh, again, of course, he got some, uh, uh, he got some pushback and some additional comments, even from Book Hermit sounding optimistic. I, I think Book Hermit was being sarcastic, Cougar. Uh, Book Hermit understands. He agrees with you. I think Book Hermit was being uh, sarcastic. <clears throat> but back to Cougar, you can dredge up all the hopium you want to. All it does is convince me that I am correct and that no one cares and that nothing will be done to avert the annihilation of 65 million years of evolution a loss that will not be reversed except over geological time periods long after humans have left the scene. For my part, I get the sense the cosmos does not view our narcissistic genocidal tendencies in a favorable light, and all these signs now are that we are about to to get ourselves whacked and good, maybe our entire branch whacked right off the tree of life. Uh, <laughs> and then, to, again, I'm skipping over in this mashup. Uh, while I, you know, don't, don't take read too much into that last comment. While I am not a pan-spiritualist, and I don't think of the Earth as a superorganism capable of thought and motive, there is a thing happening right now that should not be ignored. I don't know what to call it, but it feels like the Earth is reacting to our presence finds us toxic and is slowly preparing to vomit humanity off its surface and into the galactic dustbin of failed evolutionary experiments. Was it Terence McKenna who termed that psychic puke? Who was it who called it psychic puke kind of along kind of along these same lines uh, maybe that was out of the handbook of new of the new paradigm anyway getting back to cougar's uh, take on psychic puke uh, it's the earth is slowly preparing to vomit humanity off its surface and into the galactic dustbin of failed evolutionary experiments. The same as someone who has eaten bad food will reactively vomit that up to get rid of it before the toxins do any more harm. I can even propose one mechanism for this being the case. <coughs> Imagine the mind at work here is simply our own. Our own collective horror at what we have done, now goading us into more and worse acts of violence, counter to our own aims, and doing so in the interest of preserving our precious abstractions like religion or progress, so that 
nature mind being really just an innate and collective human drive to survive wakes suddenly to its doom, yet not aware enough of physics and planetary dynamics to formulate a problem-solution approach, then viewing any smaller doom as the work of unseen devils. That at, le that at least an intelligent person could do, given their own limits, and while wondering where the mind came from that could contemplate such horror, the intelligent person does the usual and fixates on phantasms. This has happened many times in human history. The witch trials are a good example. So is the election of Donald Trump, as was the rise of Adolf Hitler in post-war Germany. In all cases, there were devils in all directions, and intelligent people knew what had to be done about that. Now, fast forward into a global civilization with global connections, extrapolate a dawning horror onto the entire human species or at least the humans in power, and ask where that takes you. And winding up, Sam, you are an ornery coot, and we love you just like that. Happy holidays, or whatever it is. <laughs> Thank you, Cougar W., and uh, same to you, you ornery old coot yourself. Uh, so maybe we will get these two ornery coots together uh, on a Skype call when I get the energy to, uh, to restart the Collapse Chronicle uh, interview series where I'm going to get the energy for this in 2021. I have no idea. But I'm working on it, guys. I'm working on it. Anyway, I've had a long, hard drive today burning fossil fuels. There's another long comment here, which I won't get to, about uh, <laughs> one of... Uh, our collapsitarians talking about how he is gonna uh, all the uh, all the the trips that he's taking. I'll just read a little bit of it. This is from R R Rotor Tiller One uh, talking about going out and driving for entertainment. Today, this is Rotor Tiller, today I will drive 120 miles to drop off a box that will be transported to the coast and then shipped off to the other side of the planet. Tomorrow I will drive 260 miles to see a bug out house that I used this privileged existence to purchase last summer. The day after that, I will drive back 260 more miles to wait at this house until the 27th, and then after doing nothing during of conservation during this time, I will use this privileged existence to get on a plane and fly across the Pacific Ocean to our other house and get as much life lived in the shortest time possible. This is the enemy we are up against. All of us are in no position to claim being moral as 20 as 7.7 7 billion is immoral in the first place. And so my uh, comment to uh, Rotor Tiller was, 
I just drove 250 miles round trip to try to score a campsite at a folk festival that may or may not happen three months from now. I failed in my quest, by, by the way, but it was a beautiful drive nonetheless. Right now, I am figuring out how to get from here to Miami, meaning in my truck for f five hours, and then to St. Croix, American Airlines, two hours each way, then back to here, five more hours in a truck to get Sancho's kid brother out of the St. Croix Virgin Islands dog pound. Then, of course, we need to figure out how to get him from Florida to New Jersey. My guess is that this little dog will create more carbon emissions in one week than the average resident of St. Croix creates in a year. And that is no joke. I honestly believe that if this happens. But uh, wish us luck in this latest caper springing uh, Rocky, the St. Croix main snickerdoodle out of the pokey in St. Croix, and uh, we will be following that story here on Collapse Chronicles. Uh, but anyway, with that, I gotta wrap this up, cause, uh, what do I have to eat in there? It's between corn dogs and egg rolls. Anyway, enjoy your corn dogs and egg rolls and 250 mile round trip car drives while you still can and we're heading into what is it the last two days of the fall of 2020 so enjoy the fall of 2020 this weekend while you still can bye guys <laughs>